Hey, this is LOA Today, the Law of Attraction Show. Welcome to LOA Today. My name is Walt Thiessen. Today is Thursday, January 31st, 2013, and with me today is Shay Vaughn. Shay is the founder of Shaynetics, her registered trademark and approach to life that combines wellness and exercise into an overall mind-body experience designed to help you to feel great and live well. She is also the creator of the Five Living Principles of Well-Being, which she describes as a powerful guide to self-fulfillment. Shaynetics draws from a variety of disciplines, including yoga, pilates, tai chi, the martial arts, and ballet, among others. And Shay is also the creator of Healthy Initiative, a nonprofit organization devoted to helping people overcome obesity, particularly among young people. And she's here today to tell us more about the wellness and fitness empire she has built and how it can help you. So, Shay Vaughn, welcome to the show. Well, thank you all. I'm so excited uh, to have an opportunity to share always my passion and, and uh, you know, my life with, with others to uh, be able to touch hearts and make a difference. Making a difference. That's one of my favorite things, too. Speaking, yeah. speaking of uh, making the difference, you, you got this started when? When did, when did this whole thing get started? Well, you know, as a young girl, I danced, and so it was just organic, really, to come into the fitness and wellness uh, industry. Uh-huh. I did uh, many things in between all of that, but always with, you know, teaching or exercising uh, along with um, other things. And so, you know, Shane Eddicks actually blossomed because students in my class were looking for something more than just, you know, they didn't have time to go do a yoga class here and a Pilates class here or a ballet class here. And so they were looking for something that would combine some of these things together naturally and be very flowing and really be a powerhouse workout for them. And so that was really the breath that was given to uh, uh, doing Shaynetics. So you've always been into the real powerhouse approach to to really just go after it. None none of this mamby-pamby stuff. Just really, bam, (laughs) go for it. You know, um, I just think that, that we all, you know, have limited time. We do have time, but we have limited time, and we need to make that for ourselves. But I think that we need to make sure that when we do and we have that time to exercise and we set it aside, that it's something that's going to be empowering, that's going to do, you know, more than just cardio, more than just resistant strength, uh, but also give you balance in the mental side of it also. Um, so, you know, at the heart of Shaynetics, we always say that Shaynetics is actually about the beginner meeting the athlete and combining all the things that you said, which is yoga, Pilates, Tai Chi, martial arts, show, kinesis, dance, and so much more. But really at the heart of it is really five living principles, and they are commitment, perseverance, self-control, integrity, and love. And, you know, most of the time, people, these are words that they've heard before, but they really don't understand how to really apply them in their lives. So I wrote a book called uh, The Breakthrough, which is about the five living principles, helping people to reduce stress, feel great about themselves, and really find total well-being. So we actually apply that in chain addicts when we actually do the exercises because we know that when we commit, here's January, for instance, and there's been a lot of New Year's resolutions uh, made, but really about three weeks into it, they're forgotten. And the number one thing that most people, you know, are committing to or at least trying to commit to is taking off weight. And uh, what happens is that they're not committed enough You know, we need to sign contracts with ourselves. We need to know that if we're going to do something, it's going to get tough. And when it does get tough, that's what perseverance is all about, that it's really going to be something we're not going to stop at. We're not going to give up. We're going to persevere through that. And And self, yeah. No, go ahead. Yeah, no, what I was going to say is just, and self-control is really about, you know, we visualize these things. It's like a crane standing on one leg and trying to find balance uh, and, and peace in your life and joy. And the only way that we really can get that, it's not a magic pill. Somebody can't give it to us. We have to be strong enough to really step up and take responsibility for whatever happens in our life as far as what we're eating and certainly the exercise that we're doing. 
And if that's missing in our life, then we need to really, you know, dig down into the mental and the emotional side of what is keeping us back uh, from, you know, breaking through those barriers and changing those habits. One of the things that you mentioned among those five principles, the fifth one caught my attention, love, applying love. Mm -hmm. How do you go about applying love? Because that's a fascinating idea, especially where health and exercise is concerned. Well, you know, uh, the thing about love and, and integrity, I love integrity, which is the, the fourth one before we get to love, but in t- in integrity is that we all want to be honest, and we are honest people, but sometimes what really holds us back is that we're not necessarily honest with ourselves. Mm-hmm. And what that means is is that are we honest with ourselves that we're really giving 100% because we both know that if we put 30% into it, we're going to get 30% results. So we only get 100% when we give 100%. And I can remember walking around for a long time and hearing people say, you know, it's so important for you to love yourself and it's, you know, this is what you need to do. And I'm going, but I just don't. I don't love myself. And one of the things that I found is that when I started making better choices and setting better examples, it became a whole lot easier to be able to love myself. And that's really, let me share something that's very impactful, a story that kind of brings us all together. Sure. Usually before my classes, I, I normally give, um, you know, some, some tips on what happened to me, you know, throughout, during the week and how I had to actually apply, you know, one or two or all of the uh, principles uh, in my life to be able to help me get through something. Mm-hmm. And Scott was sitting in the class and he raised his hand and I said, what's going on? And he said, last week I was fired. Friday was my last day. And he says, working on a project that I thought was very important, but obviously nobody else did. He said, I probably didn't even have to come in, and I felt felt like getting up and just walking out because who cares? Nobody was caring about him. And he said, I couldn't help but to hear those principles, you know, in my little ear and Shay's voice coming through, commitment, perseverance, self-control, integrity, and love. And he said, I was committed. He said, I decided to do it, and I was committed to do the right thing. I persevered through it when it was really difficult. Uh, I took uh, self-control is about taking responsibility that he was doing it because he wanted to do it. And the integrity, he, he was really honest with himself by saying, you know, maybe nobody will even look at this, but I know that I'm making the right choice. And he said, I have to really tell you, I walked out of there really loving myself and really feeling good about the decision that I made. And I really didn't walk out there with my chin low or, you know, feeling sad or anything. And those are the things you think about when you take those things into your life and you apply them in that manner. He actually was asked to come back and uh, work again after two weeks. And I, I can't help but to think that something about, you know, taking that responsibility and making those best choices had something to do with that. Oh, I would think so, too. In fact, uh, well, first of all, I would think that would be tremendously, <clears throat> excuse me, tremendously gratifying for you to have him, to know that he is actually applying the principles you laid out and doing so so successfully. I mean, that all by itself has got to be good. But on top of that, the fact that, like you said, he got called back in two weeks later after right. they after he was let go. I mean, when was the last time anyone listening in, including myself, can think of that somebody got asked in two weeks later? That, right. that, that just doesn't happen. It really doesn't. It really doesn't. But, you know, the truth of the matter is it wouldn't have – it made a difference in his life. There's no question about that. But the fact that he did the right thing had such an impact and gave him such, you know, a, a, a better attitude about things that just even going out and looking for another job. So, you know, sometimes I say to people, you know, it's not easy to get laid off. There's no question about that. But sometimes when we give back, you know, don't sit home and just – you know, worry about it. Do something. There's so many groups out there. I can tell you stories uh, about uh, a a gal, the same thing happened to her, and she. we were talking, and I said, you know what? There's a number of different nonprofit organizations or ways that you can give back, and she actually did that and ended up getting a full-time job with one of the nonprofit organizations. Oh, so cool. So there's, um, you know, we really need to realize that, you know, 
doing something, taking action, having a good attitude, and just you know not sitting home and 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 um, feeling sorry for ourselves doesn't really help us to propel forward. You know where exercise in particular is concerned. Uh, I know a lot of people, including Louise, who wanted to be here, but she unfortunately her schedule is really weird, so right. I never know whether she's going to be a part of the interview or not. But um, one of, one of our ongoing themes in our relationship is is trying to get out there and do more exercise, which for her is a challenge because most typical exercise regimens and so forth she doesn't enjoy at all she has no enjoyment at them so it's always a question of trying to find stuff that she really likes and and what i've realized over the years is that the one thing that is most consistent for her in terms of finding something she likes is if she can be talking with somebody while she's doing it so for instance we'll go walking and if if, if we may be like you know 100 feet into it and if we're not talking she's losing interest in getting ready to go to the car but all I have to do is start talking with her, and you know she'll go at least a mile or a mile and a half, which for her is a long distance, just That's because right. she's talking. Or, or we'll go to a grocery store, and just the fact that she's pushing a cart. We don't have to be buying anything. Just pushing the cart keeps her going because it gives her something else to do besides the exercise. Yeah. You know, that's one of the reasons why group exercise is also good, too, or doing, you know, setting up something to do something with a buddy Mm, so that you can, you know, so that you have company to do things. And with Healthy Initiative, which I know we're going to talk about, so I'm going to just jump in on it right now. That's right. Sure, go ahead. (laughs) Um, Healthy Initiative is really a nonprofit organization that I put together, and it's really uh, really for the, the purpose of, building ambassadors across the country that really want to give back. It really is Chicago leading the way to be able to just, you know, as the first state doing this, to be able to fight preventative diseases such as obesity, Mm -hmm. type 2 diabetes, uh, heart attacks, Mm -hmm. uh, and certain cancers. And we took, I took 40 different individuals that had really struggled a long time, uh, had, um, you know, tried every diet out there and really had come to the realization that enough is enough, but I need help, and who's going to be out there to help me? So Healthy Initiative stepped forward. We took these 40 individuals, and I have to tell you, it's been a great journey. They did a 90-day breakthrough program. Now, some of them, when they actually applied, had to quit smoking because they had been smoking for over 30 years. Oh, wow. And you know how hard it is to quit smoking, let alone take off weight. Actually, I've never had to quit smoking, so I don't really know, but I I can imagine from having tried to do other things. (laughs) Yeah, well, I've never smoked either, but it's difficult. I've known a a number of people that, you know, quit smoking and and, uh, gained weight, and they found it difficult. And many of them have gone back and didn't, you know, really make it the first time. Oh, yeah. But the, the, the impactful thing and the most inspirational thing is, is that, uh, we have people that have quit smoking, smoking. We've got people that are off of all medications, uh, that were pre-diabetics or, or had diabetes type 2 and skin disorders and just feeling and having more energy and mm. just feeling great. And it's, you know, they'll tell stories when they come in about the fact that people, you know, are taking a look at them when they go to work and they, what are you doing? And Mm. how come you have so much more energy? And it seems like your whole attitude has changed. Wow. And they are actually sharing the program with them. And they are becoming ambassadors because these people are saying, can you help me? And they go, yes, I'm happy to do that. That's very cool. Very, very cool. Now, now, what's the secret? How, like you say, it's very easy if you, you know, initially take a step or two toward overcoming whatever it is, obesity or giving up smoking or whatever I, thing you're I dealing think, with. Is. Yeah, but, I but, think but sometimes that, we all get, to get tripped up, and yet something has yeah. to change that. I think, I, I don't think I know that the biggest um, obstacle is really the mental mm. and the emotional strength that it takes to stay committed to stay in the game and to be honest with yourself so that you can have the results that you're really looking for. Yeah. We don't even think about that. I don't think that we get enough coaching. You know, that's in this particular program, we've done all kinds of introducing them to different kinds of exercises. Uh, they've done Shaynetics, which is, which is my program, and they love that. And even if they're doing something else, they usually add some of the uh, Shaynetics to it. 
Um, but they, we've done water aerobics with them. I taught uh, a water aerobics class for them, and very interactive. Uh, they were, you know, uh, playing uh, games in the water with each other, communicating, giving high fives. I mean, just really had a blast. We taped it, and so it was really fun to look back on it and see how much fun they were having. Uh, this next week, they're going to actually do some Latin um, uh, dancing mm. and and just kind of kick it up, you know, uh, another uh, notch. But there's really a lot of options out there. I think that what happens is that, you know, many times people say, well, I don't like to do this and I don't like to do that and I don't like to do that. And we have a delete button. We kind of just take our, our, our fingers and, and, and touch our, uh, our temple uh, vigorously because – It's so important not to feed that stuff to yourself and say, oh, I don't like this. You can pick and choose what you want, but sometimes you don't even know that you like it because you really haven't even tried it or given it a chance. Oh, that's true. So, yeah, I mean, going to, you know, going to the, uh, to the gym or whatever and just, you know, sticking on the, on the treadmill or an elliptic or something like that, that's not fun, but doesn't mean they can't do it for a half hour. Or do it for, you know, part of the time. But there's classes that you can take, spin classes, all kinds of things. And at least, you know, you may not be talking to somebody, but at least what you can do is that you can interact and listen to the instructor because that person is talking all the time and coaching you through it so that you'll have a great experience. I have to admit, one of the things that uh, frustrates both of us is where we now live, because wh- where we live, we're about 50 miles from Washington, D.C., but we're kind of on the outskirts in the rural areas, and there's nothing really close by. Ah. We used to we used to live in Connecticut, and when we were in Connecticut, uh, even before I met my wife, I was very much into swing dancing, and swing dancing, as you know, oh, you know I love it's wonderful. Swing dance. Oh, it's fabulous fun. Oh, I've got to come up there, and we've got to go swing dancing. Cool, let's do it. <laughs> that would be so much fun. I love to dance. I mean, my whole background was in dance, and uh, I obviously don't do everything that I did back then, but I, you know, I haven't lost it all either. That's great. I mean, swing dancing to me is like that. That's where it's all at. That's that's yeah. the best kind of exercise because it is so much fun. It's so much fun. But that's been the frustration that there's nothing close by. I mean, to where we live right now, in order to go swing dancing, it's a commitment to drive an hour each way just to get there and back, and you know, mm. it's it's really not great. <laughs> no, but you know, one of the things that you can do is kind of like you know date night. And you have to really take the time to do that. And, you know, it sounds perfect that your date night would be swing dancing. And even though it's an hour away and, you know, maybe you don't want to stay out, you know, that late, but you go for part of it and you really have a good time and you have, a you know, a day that's set to do that, I think that makes a a lot of difference. That's probably a good idea, yeah, to to, to treat it like a date night so that, uh, like you said, we don't have to stay there the whole time, which is actually fit Louise very nicely because, uh, you know, she, she did swing dance with me for like the last two or three years she she met me toward the end of my 10 year span or so doing that activity okay and so she got to know my friends and so forth but even then we'd go to the dance i'd be dancing all night long i'd get her to dance maybe like one out of five dances the rest of the time she'd be talking to my friends <laughs> okay but she was having a fun and you were she doing was, what you yeah. wanted to do and you were dancing and, yep. and that's the beauty of being able to go and if your friends you know if you know some people that are there it's a great social um, you know, up, uh, you know, uh, up evening that you can really enjoy doing the things that you both like to do. And plus, one of the things about swing dancing, a lot of people they see swing dancing, and they say, "Oh, that's so cool!" But I could never do that. And they get they get defeated on it before they even get out of the gate without realizing with just like one or two lessons, you can be doing it with with very little oh, difficulty. Absolutely. I mean, because it's you not know, that it's difficult. it's funny, at um, the 40 participants also, we were invited by the Jaffrey Ballet to uh, participate in a program oh, that wow. they were doing, which was a class, because one of the things that they are interested in doing is saying, hey, we're here, um, you know, this is great exercise for you, and we want to open it up to the general public. Cool. And so uh, Healthy Initiative was an, invited to uh, bring the participants, and I'll tell you, it was absolutely more fun than they ever thought that they were going to have. <laughs> and um, we've actually taken it and put it on YouTube. Really? And believe it or not, when it was put on, we didn't even, it's called Healthy Initiative, uh, YouTube. And when we put it on, we didn't even re- we didn't even know if it was hooked up right or, you know, if it was going to work or whatever. And in one day alone, I think we had like 1,500 downloads on oh. it. 
and people could just see what a great time we were having. So if anybody's interested in taking a look at that and seeing what the participants were, you know, exposed to, um, there's another option for you. That's fantastic. And there are so many different kinds of dance you can do, too. I mean, a lot of people don't realize how many dance styles there are and how varied and different they are, how, how different mm-hmm. the experiences are between them. Mm-hmm. It's Absolutely. just a question of finding them. Right. And I just think really sometimes if somebody doesn't have a- access to, you know, a gym um, or uh, something, uh, g- get a buddy and, and go for a walk or you know, some great DVDs. Um, you know, I, I want to promote my own DVDs because I think they're great. But, you know, if you invite somebody over to do a Shane Eddicks DVD, it's something that you can do that is social and you'll both encourage each other to even do a better job than sometimes when you just do it alone. Yeah, and, and that's the key, I think. The key is social because so many people are social animals. And for those people, and how many people is that? It's probably you know, the vast majority of the population. That's going to be mm. the easiest way, I would think, to get into anything that has an exercise Absolutely. component and, and to do it in such a way that after you're done you say, gee, was I exercising? Yeah, it's like you don't even know that you're doing it. It's so important really to think about these things because when you take a look at the statistics out there on obesity, oh. it's scary. You're talking about... 69 plus percent on a national mm. basis that people are either overweight or obese. You're talking about children, 33 percent, and in some states, depending upon the state, it's as high as 57 percent. Wow. And this is the first time in history where now children are dying before their parents. Mm. Yeah, that's Now, tragic. I can't think of anything that is more tragic. Yeah. And there's not the role models out there that um, we would like to have because I think that, you know, we've grown up in, a, in this, you know, uh, society where there's fast food, it's easy, uh, it's inexpensive, and we're doing nothing but putting, you know, all of these, you know, toxins into our body, and most of it isn't even real food. Now, Health, Healthy Initiative was also aimed in part against um, uh, the obesity that young people experience. Where have you uh, had some experiences and some successes with that? Well, we um, have had some successes with that. I had um, a, a gal call me one day, and she w- actually was putting an initiative together. And her um, the reason that she was doing it was because her daughter was obese. Mm. And I was talking to her on the phone, and she was telling me all the great things about what she had in mind to do and how she wanted to, to help them. And I think there was about, it wasn't a big group or anything, but there was 10 children that were in it, and her daughter was 14 years old. Mm-hmm. And I couldn't help myself, but when I was talking with her on the phone, I said to her, can I ask you a question? And she said, of course. And I said, is this something that you're struggling with? Uh-huh. And she said, yes. And I said, well, what are you doing to set that example? I know you want to, you know, help your kids, but how are you going about it? What are you doing? And she said, well, you know, I'm trying to eat better. Uh, We've talked about exercise, but not really doing it. Hmm. So I invited her and her daughter to come to a healthy initiative meeting that we have on Sundays. We all get together, and we talk about what's going on in the week, and we do exercise together, and we... um, You know, really take a look at at, um, what people have had to do to, you know, really work through the barriers, as I keep saying, that keep holding them back. And they came to the meeting, and she actually ended up being part, and she is currently right now, part of Healthy Initiative. And I think she's taken off about 35 pounds. Oh, my. Yeah, and they've somewhat cleaned out a lot of the bad food the toxins that she's, you know, had, um, you know, that she's brought in. And um, and now they're doing it as a family. You can get to the root of it if you can, you know, have family members uh, support you. And if you're doing, you know, a healthy living uh, lifestyle as a team sure. um, or with friends, it's so, so much more impactful. I had a call the other day, too. This one just totally broke my heart. A mother called me and said, um panically on the phone to me that her daughter had just started school, uh, college, had graduated from high school, Mm -hmm. and she was a freshman uh, in school, and she said, um, but she is is unhappy, 
Um, there is nothing going on that is joyful in her life. Oof. And she said it is because she weighs 400 pounds. Oh, my. 400 pounds. Wow. And I said, oh, my goodness. I said, um, we definitely need to figure out something that can, you know, give her some, you know, help. And mm. once again, I asked the question, do you suffer from obesity? Mm-hmm. And she weighed over 300 pounds. Mm. So, you know, what's happening is that people are looking at their children and saying, what is going on? Yeah. Uh, there was an article just two days ago in the paper that actually talked about uh, physicians now because they're seeing more obesity in children than ever before, taking a proactive approach to treating it by as young as six months old, giving them insulin um, shots. Wow. Now, that is not the way to go. You and I both know that. So, you know, there's got to be other answers, and we definitely think that uh, Healthy Initiative is doing their job to do that. Uh, and there is a 90-day breakthrough program, and we, you know, can help people even if they're not living here in, in Chicago, uh, by just getting the information to them, and having them, you know, join that program. And they can actually go on uh, the Healthy Initiative. I'm going to give you two websites that they can kind of check us out. Okay. And one of them is www.healthyinitiative.org, and then the other one is. Uh, it's www.shaynetics.com, and that's S-H-E-A-N-E-T-I-C-S dot com. And I want to encourage people to really buy the book because it is um, so full of inspiration. It's all two stories about people breaking through uh, probably all of the same issues that somebody else has, and you can relate to it, but you can actually hear the success that can be yours if you're willing to just, you know, um, you know, take charge of your life and, and just make some small changes in it. Success stories really do make a difference, too, in, in any kind of change that you're making, but I especially would think it would be true of, of exercise and weight loss and that kind of thing because right. that's, that's where we get our inspiration from. It's like, well, if they did it, maybe really I can do it. Right. You know, I can remember growing up, and um, we've all had, you know, uh, challenges in our lives and, and some, you know, um, more tragic than others. Mm-hmm. But, you know, the principles do help you. They're the answers and the solutions that help you to break through those those kinds of things. And it's not just applying them to exercise or your eating habits. It's applying it to everything that's in your life. Uh, think about, I have a good friend, for instance, that. And I'm just going to use this, this concept, so if anybody's out there using a microwave, I'm not making judgment on it, I'm just you know, telling you about it. But so many times we end up living our lives, just I call it just turning the page, because we're not ready to buy into something, we're not ready, we want it, but we're just, we're just not ready to do it. And um, what happens is that uh, one of the gals who, uh, uh, at book club was actually reading one of uh, an article and actually did some uh, um, uh, fact finding on the uh, internet about uh, a microwave oven, and it was just saying how it takes all of the nutrition out of it because out of the food because it heats it at such a high level. Mm-hmm. And so you know she thought about that because she you know thought well this is. I, you know, use it for leftovers in the evening. I do my children's, you know, I I heat up my children's food for it and everything, and we turn the page. Mm. She goes to book club. She meets a friend, and she says, oh, my goodness, did you see that article? And they talk about it, and she says, you know, the minute I read that article because I knew it was not good for my children or good for the family, I went out, I, you know, I didn't give it away because I didn't want to give it to someone, you know, because it's, it would do the same thing for them. I threw it out. Oh my. She said, yeah, and she said, I went and I got a toaster oven, and do you know that I can do everything in that, that I could do in that, to- in that uh, uh, microwave uh, oven, and even though it might have taken a couple more minutes, I felt so much better about what I was doing for my family and for myself. Yeah, that's true. There really is very little that you can't do with a toaster oven that you can do with a microwave yeah. oven. And, and we use that a lot, actually. It's one of our favorite things to do. So, yeah, I agree with that. So I think, t- you know, turning the page is sometimes people just aren't there at that moment to really accept that uh, that responsibility. I was actually uh, with someone yesterday 
who uh, is an Italian boy that was raised in a family that owned uh, pizza um, uh, places uh, all over. And his father, he said, I'm so worried about my father because he won't change his eating habits and has actually had several of his fingers amputated oh. because of his diet. Wow. So these stories are all out there, and it's being done to people, and they still are not taking responsibility and making the changes. And yet, even from the stories you were telling a little bit earlier in the broadcast, people, even if they're not seeing it in themselves, at least they're seeing it in their children or in their parents. And in right. that way, maybe they're beginning to see it as a mirror reflection. Even if they don't see it right away, they talk to you about it, you point out there is a mirror reflection going on there. There is. So, so know, there's, there's at least some hope there. There is hope. There's definitely, there's always hope. And one of the things that uh, helped me to put Healthy Initiative together was really uh, watching a documentary that's called The Weight of the Nation. And this was really giving out, in fact, there's uh, books written on it now that you can pick up. Uh, but the statistics on that and sitting and watching a 13-year-old girl on that documentary crying because she did not understand how she got to where she was. Um, I, I think about the gal that I shared with you that called, and the mother called, and just in despair for her daughter, who's, mm. who weighs, you know, 400 pounds. Yeah, I wanted to go back to that one. What what uh, came out of that? Did I, any improvement happen? Well, part of it is is that they don't live close. Um, she's on campus, and one of the things that we are doing is that we are going to be uh, talking to a number of college campuses and putting sh and putting healthy initiative as a um, a health benefit to the college age children. Oh, that's good. And and one of the reasons we want to do that is just a great opportunity to catch um, that age group, whereby they're making their own choices because mom and dad's not there, you know, to do that. Right. But they're not totally independent on their own either, not financially or you know. Um, uh, living wise mm -hmm. and so we know that if we can have that impact because most kids that go to school uh, their first year their freshman year do you know that they're gained between 30 and 50 to 60 pounds on average this, on average this is what's happening oh my goodness oh yeah so what we want to do is that we know that even if they don't buy a hundred percent into making all the changes that we would love to see them you know do they're going to have a lot more awareness and education and make better choices. And I do know that by the time they graduate and they have families of their own, they're going to care enough about to do something different than what the families many times that they've come from. Mm. Because, you know, the kids, you know, I have people say to me all the time, I'm suffering with this with my kids. And the first thing I, thing I say to them, I go, well, wait a second. These kids aren't going to the grocery store and buying their own food. Mm -hmm. yep. And so we think that we're doing them a favor by, you know, giving them, you know, all this junk and sugar. And all we're doing is shortening their lives. Louise and I get frustrated very often when we're out doing our grocery shopping because we, we find certain products that we like that, you know, don't have all the sugar, don't have all that stuff that you don't want and, they, and, and we enjoy the right. flavor of it and then it turns out it's not terribly popular compared to the sugar stuff and so it disappears off the, the store shelves and what we're left with is a bunch of sugar products and we say ah, there right, goes another one we liked there you go absolutely but there, you know you do have to do research um, and when somebody is carrying something you know and you're in a grocery store if you know them thank them for doing that yeah uh, ask them not to get rid of we've it. been doing that, that um, and, and you get amazing reactions they should, you know, when you walk through a grocery store and they're giving you all these samples, mm -hmm. then th they should be doing that on a daily basis with all the things that are really good for you. Yeah, yeah. And, so, and know, there are actually a few stores that do that. that. More. There, there are a few stores that actually do that, believe it or not. There, yeah. There's one in particular where we shop at. The chain is called Wegmans. And, yeah, they do have some of the stuff that's not so good, but they have a lot of samples. Every week that we're there, they always have some samples out, and usually they're very healthy samples. So there actually are some chains that do it. I think Whole Isn't Foods that does great? the same thing. Yeah, that's it is wonderful. great. Yeah, it, it's encouraging. It's like, oh, wow, there's a hope here. There's like, there, there are people who actually care about eating well. That's great. Yeah. And, you know, the other thing, too, is that we're also busy multitasking all the time. Oh, yes. And, and, and we think that we're kind of propelling forward and, and that it's good for us. But, you know, I have a friend who is a single mom, for instance, 
and every um, and growing up, she would always ask. Uh, you know, she'd always help her daughter uh, with her homework mm. as she was texting. And just kind of like fast forward a, a couple of years, you know, forward on this, they're having a conversation, and uh, the mom saying to uh, her daughter. I don't know what you're talking about. I was with you every night helping you, you know, with your homework. And the daughter says, Mom, you were texting. So the daughter's never going to believe that she was in the moment or that she was really, you know, uh, focused on helping her with homework when, in fact, she was distracted by, you know, texting all the time. Have you ever been talking to somebody and even a good friend and you're telling them something and all of a sudden their eyes just kind of like go to the other side or you can tell that they just, you know, want to get on with something else? Yep. I've just lost it's them. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, it's really, really important to just, you know, think about these things. Many times when we are in the moment, we find out things just like the texting thing that maybe wasn't the message that we wanted to deliver, but it was the the, the uh, message that got delivered. Amazing and if we want to make a too. difference, then we need to change what we're doing. Yeah, yeah. Amazing things happen when you're in the moment. Um, just to give you an example, not really related to nutrition, in, in a sense, it's kind of an indirect way it is. Louise and I, when we go shopping, one of the things she loves to do is we'll be you know standing in the checkout aisle, right? And there will be a, a, a kid with a mom, the kid's in the cart, and maybe like you know one or two years old or something like that and crying and all that kind of stuff and louise will just take her time to look right in the eyes of that infant until she catches the infant's eyes the infant will look back the crying stops almost immediately and the infant's looking at her like wow someone's actually taking an interest in me within about 30 seconds the kid's smiling the mom is is almost oblivious because she's you know checking out and you know paying the bill and all that kind of stuff she looks back and like oh you you, you turned your attitude around or whatever it might be it's amazing just it's living so in the true. moment I've right seen there that happen yes it's so true and, and that's you know as we get older we need that kind of attention too mm, you absolutely. know we need to know that somebody's interested in what we have to say and isn't that what everybody else is looking for us to give to them when they're talking to us, too? So, you know, it's really important to, uh, you know, really take a deep breath and, and, and realize that, you know, it all gets done. And, and uh, being in the moment brings clarity when sometimes we find out things that we don't even want to find out. Yeah. Because our perceptions <laughs> have been so different. Yeah. And, yeah. and, and the truth of the matter is, is that whether it's something you want to, that you like that you found out or it's contrary to what, you know, you thought, the truth of the matter is, is it gives you clarity and freedom. And freedom allows you to move forward within your life to be able to concentrate on other people or other things that uh, are of importance to yourself and people that really care and love you. And there's a funny thing that goes along with it, too. You're talking about um, what happens when, when, when people want to have attention paid to them. When you pay attention to other people, that's what you get. It comes back to you. It, it becomes a, a reinforcing cycle so that the more attention she pays to the little people, they pay attention back to her. The parents also start paying attention to her. All of a sudden, everybody in this checkout aisle is relating to each other as human, as human beings instead of just, you know, well, that's somebody I don't know. I'm not going to talk to them. So just the fact of paying attention, that alone gets you attention back. It's always about giving and getting it. You always get more when you give. Uh, you get something more back when you actually do that. And it's so true what you're saying. I definitely believe in that. I wonder how many opportunities we miss on a daily basis. I mean, not just checkout aisles, but anywhere. On the phone, we're out you know, walking, we're out doing this, that, or the other thing, maybe business-related, picking up the kids at school, whatever. I wonder how many opportunities we miss. Well, I think that we, we miss a lot. And one of the things that I think people, even though they may go and exercise, I think they miss out sometimes because uh, I always tell my students uh, before we get started is that whatever is on your mind, or whatever you're thinking about, can you please just set it outside the door? Mm. It's, you can, it's like dirty dishes. I promise you it's going to be there to, for you to pick up after. Because coming in and exercising and doing something great for yourself, if you're sitting there and thinking about, I need to go to the grocery store, i got to pick up the kids, i got to do this, i got to do that, and you're really not in that moment either. You're not getting all the benefits that you can get from just enjoying 
And joy is it. I mean, that, yeah. that, that's the whole thing right there. I mean, Absolutely. It, take, take your five living principles, sum them all up. Commitment, perseverance, self-control, integrity, and love. What does that add up to? It adds up to joy. It does. It adds up to really having breakthroughs and breaking through the barriers that are really holding you back from living the life that you really want to live. And the answers are there. This, you know, we're all Dorothy's. We've got the, the slippers on. We've got, we've got the red slippers <laughs> on. And sometimes, you know, we can just, you know, I, t- I talk about clicking our heels together are the five principles because you're, you're there, you're home. And, and you can get there if you just apply them. Mm-hmm. That's the whole trick, isn't it? Applying it and, and as you say, persisting in applying it. Mm-hmm. Not giving up. So many times we start out and we just, you know, it's just not an option. You've really got to tell yourself it's not an option to give up just because it gets tough. I do often say it's okay to stop for a short while and pause. Yeah. You know, because sometimes things do get difficult. But most of the time when uh, people are trying to diet or do something, one of the reasons that they actually fail is because, you know, they, you know, they get off track, which is normal. Mm -hmm. But they stay there and they beat themselves up Mm. and they end up, you know, feeling like a a failure with it. And they put all that weight back on plus when really all they needed to do is, you know, okay, I've done this. We give them the tools to be able to get back on track quickly. And then in two days or 24 hours, you're back on track again and you just haven't stayed in that that unpleasant place that's going to just draw you back down again and put you in the place that you don't want to be. I haven't been in that place for for some time now, but there have been numerous times where I have been, and on some of those occasions, Louise and I joke about this, she will sometimes come over to me, especially if I'm lying down or something, and she'll straddle me, she'll grab me by the shirt, and she'll say, snap out of it! There you go. (laughs) But if you don't have a Louise to say... You somebody to give you that wake-up call because you don't even realize that you feel that way. But if you don't have a Louise to, to tell you to snap out of it, yeah. what can you do? What can you do if if you're on your own and you need you don't have that? So how can you make yourself snap out of it? Mm-hmm. Well, you know, I, I love that commercial on TV that you know it shows the person who's depressed mm. and how it affects everybody within the family. Right, right. And you know that's what you're really talking about when you kind of get down. I mean, maybe you're not to that extreme. But, you know, the day's been off day and just everything just didn't turn out the way you wanted it to be. You know, you're not alone. This happens to everybody. Yeah. But, you know, tomorrow is a new beginning. And we need to look at it that way because we are so lucky to be able to wake up in the morning. And I always tell my students, you better start talking positive to yourself mm-hmm. as soon as you wake up in the morning because as soon as you turn on the news or, you know, walk out the door or do something. You've got plenty of people that are going to tell you, you know, negative things. Mm-hmm. And you don't need that in your life. Yeah, you're right. You can start the day that way. In fact, you can even do it in the middle of the day. If you're if you're having yeah. a bad day, you can you can actually turn your day around on a dime. Yes. In fact, uh, just recently we had a, another guest on, Steve Rizzo. He's a comedian who's also a motivational speaker, and he gave us a really great tip. If you're having a tough time, you're you're depressed, you're angry, you're scared, whatever it might be, try to find something in that situation that's absurd and turn the absurd into funny and laugh at it. And you just exactly. dispel it. You dispel it right there. Well, you know, and some of the other hints, too, because I think that's so great, but you know, people say, you know, I'm stressed and whatever. I, I have to share with you, I'm not a great component of thinking that you are, you can manage your stress. I know that there's been, you know, books that have been written on managing stress. Okay. What I believe and what we talk about in the breakthrough, my book, is really about giving it a break. Because one of the things I found is that the more I'm trying to manage something that is stressful to me, the more stressful I get with it. Oh, but if okay. I just get away from it, if I, you know, listen to some music that I love or I go and exercise or I get out of the house or I call a friend to uh, to meet to go for a walk or have lunch or stop for tea or uh, any of those things, you know, even when you're at work, you hear so many times, get up and just walk around, don't sit there. And you come back just uh, enough refreshed that it can actually turn those things around. I'll tell you what's really amazing about it, too, is that sometimes when we don't just have the answers immediately about, you know, what we want to do about something that's bothering us, sometimes if we give it a break, we think more clearly. 
and all of a sudden we go, oh, this is what I think I should do. Yeah, that's and a we, good point. And, and we do and, that. And breaks don't have to take real long either. They can be fairly quick. Absolutely. No, I mean five minutes, ten minutes, fifteen minutes. You know, it really depends on what your schedule is and, and what you you know what you can do. But it's important to give that to yourself because just sitting there and worrying about it is not going to you know make it go away. No, it's and many not times we yeah, but and many times we worry about things that sometimes don't even come to fruition. Yeah. <laughs> you know how many times have we done that? And oh. it's always about what if. Well, if you keep playing the what if game with your, yourself, you're going to drive yourself crazy because half of it's not going to happen. I do think that it's important as far as business and family and other things are concerned to try to look forward to be, you know, aware of certain things if they did happen, but not to just focus on them to the point where it's like it's happening right now. Right. It's the difference between traveling through it and getting trapped in it. And, and getting trapped in it. Absolutely. Yep. Because you don't want to be trapped. You, certainly, you want to be able to get through it. You want to follow the path and, and get past whatever it is you need to get past, and you want to be aware of it. But that doesn't mean you have to absorb it and, and make it your life. Right. And, you know, I really want to say to your listeners out there, if they're going through some difficult times and whatever, you know, find something that you can give back. Mm. Go and volunteer or help with something, and you you will be absolutely amazed at the benefits that it will bring into your life. Well, Shay, Shaynetics and, and Healthy Initiative both sound like they are phenomenal programs, and, and you've certainly done a lot with them. I know you mentioned the web addresses before, but let's give it to listeners one more time. Where can they find out about each one of those? Right, and they also can find a link to the book on the uh, website that I'm going to give you, The Breakthrough. Okay. And uh, the Healthy Initiative is www.healthyinitiative.org, and then www.shaynetics.com. And I'll make sure that uh, when this podcast gets posted, we'll also include a link to not only those two websites, but to the book so they can get to all three very easily. So. I thank you so much, Walt. This has oh, been a welcome. pleasure for me, and uh, blessings. Oh, thank you. Thank you for joining us today. It's been really great. You've, you presented some excellent information here, and I really want to wish you best of luck, particularly with the Healthy, Healthy Initiative. How long has that been going on now? You know, uh, about eight months, and uh -huh. we've done so much with it. Like I said, you know, uh, talking to colleges and, and uh, trying to get that program, you know, off so we can uh, make a difference in the lives of, the, of, of uh, future generations where mm -hmm. they're not going to be, you know, fighting as difficult as our children are fighting today with uh, obesity. Can you name any of the institutions that have already taken it on to some degree? They haven't taken uh, it on yet because we're just in um, uh, the uh, talking stages. So uh, it's really that early. Several of yeah. them. Exactly. But yeah. I will be happy to come back on and tell you about that at uh, another time. Cool. All right. Well, we're going to hold you to that, you know. I, I hope that you do. I, okay. I, I will be loving to share it. Shay Vaughn, thank you so much for joining us today. We really appreciate it. You're welcome. Thank you so much. We'll see you all next time here on LOA Today. Goodbye, everybody.